Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cyclical Investors Club YouTube channel. My name is Corey Kramer, and today we're going to be analyzing Genuine Parts Company, um, ticker GPC. This one came in by request down in the comments section of one of my other videos. If you have a stock you would like me to take a look at, put it down in the comments. I will get it on the whiteboard behind me, and eventually I will make a video. Um, if it's a stock that's in the S&P 500, like Genuine Parts is, I post those on YouTube for free. The rest I post on Patreon, which is $5 a month. And if you join there, you get a big discount to the full Cyclical Investors Club service on Seeking Alpha. Um, those links will be down in the description. As always, this isn't individual investing advice. This is just how I analyze stocks. And I usually start by reviewing any coverage I've had of a stock before. Um, I covered this one. I bought this one in March of 2020 right at the bottom. So, and I wrote on it on Seeking Alpha. Um, let's see, we can pull it up here on June 4th. So it was a couple months later. I had bought, I bought so many stocks in March of 2020. It took me about three months to write about them all. Um, so this was part of a series that I wrote about buying it. Now I did eventually take profits, um, in that and I can, let's see, where's that at? Here we go. So held it from 32020 to 61721. So a little over a year, like uh, 15 months or so and 130% profit. So that one worked out really well for me. Um, and I sold it based on just valuation at the time. So I bought it when it was very cheap. I mean, it's kind of exactly what you what you want to do when you're doing this kind of, it's almost a perfect example, actually. Um, so I bought about here, sold about there or so, and did really well. So, and it's risen about, I think, uh, 17 or 18% since I sold it. So it's, it hasn't risen very far. Um, since then, I think it's a little bit better than that if I go back one more week, but, um, but it hasn't really done a whole lot more since, since it was sold based on the valuation. If you look at the, at the, it was up a 20 PE basically. Um, I think it was actually a little lower than that because I was looking at, or the PE was higher, but I was looking at these earnings and then the peak earnings here. And uh, because of stimulus, they ended up doing better the next couple of years, like a lot of businesses did. But at that time, I didn't quite uh, realize how big these jumps were going to be for them. Um, but I was definitely happy to get, you know, 130% profit in a little over a year. And the stock is just a little slightly higher um, than when I sold it. So, so that all worked out well. So th this is the same analysis that basically the same analysis that I used to buy it then is the one that I'm going to share here in this video. So it's kind of nice when we actually have a previous historical example. So the first thing we want to look at here are the historical earnings pattern. I'm going to shorten this a little bit so we can get the individual years to pop up here. There we go. So during the Great Recession, only fell about earnings only fell about what, like 15, 16%, something like that. So that would be like moderately cyclical. Um, and then more recently, we had just a brief COVID decline again, um, kind of moderate. Uh, we had a little bit of weakness in these two years, which are kind of weaker economic years. So this all sort of just makes sense. It's like a moderately cyclical stock. Um, the earning or the price, the stock price, can just briefly look at here. I don't usually look too closely at this if earnings are okay. It fell about the same as the wider market. So all else being equal, this is kind of an average S&P 500 stock is how I would think about it um, historically, just looking at the historical numbers. Now, if we shrink it up to more modern day, now there are a couple things worth noting here. I don't remember if I controlled for these for my earnings growth rate. I'm gonna say probably not. So when we get to my earnings growth rate, I would call it, um, I would think of it as optimistic. I know in 2020, when I bought this stock, I think I had the earnings growth in between five and 6%. Um, and right now it's a little over 6%, but this year was a big tax cut year. So it had an unusual growth rate. 
Um, if that wasn't included, we can just look and see earnings growth was flat for those one, two, three, four years or five years um, going into the pandemic. So really no earnings growth. And then the pandemic had a slight decline, but we can kind of put an asterisk on that on the other end and say, well, it might not have been so bad. Then we get the stimulus and we have another couple big years. Um, but they they did maintain this this year, which is which is good. And then now we're looking at 6% from analysts um, for the year we're in right now. Um, so I think I'm going to have like a 6% earnings growth rate when we get to it. That to me is pretty optimistic. Um, so maybe that's just worth keeping in mind. I don't think I'm being like too harsh on them given this really slow earnings growth we saw before the pandemic. Um and we're unlikely to get like another huge tax cut or anything. Probably unlikely to have like a ton more stimulus unless there's a recession first. So, um, so that's kind of the basic setup here for what we want to look at when we go look at the valuation, which is what I'll look at next. Let's see. Here we go. So I have my six percent, six point one four percent earnings growth rate assumption. Um, I also adjust for for debt a little bit, if we go back to the fast graph, the quick way that I do this, I just look at the difference between the market cap and the total enterprise value. So we'll see if fast, sometimes fast graph will pull up an explanation. Yeah, there we go. So this would include their debt, any preferred stock, any other stuff that um, you would have to pay for if you were buying the company basically. Um, and so what I do is I look at the difference between this the, the market cap, which is what it trades at, and then what it, you would actually have to pay if you bought it. And then I add that to the stock price, um, that same ratio to the stock price. So if this is 30% higher, um, then I add 30% to the stock price when I'm doing my, valua my valuation analysis. So it makes the valuation more conservative um, by assuming you would really be paying $168 if you were buying the whole business along with all their debt and everything like that. So that's kind of how that roughly works. And it's a very quick way for me to do this. So when you monitor like 600 stocks, um, you find quick ways to kind of roughly get you there to get your kind of list down. And then before you buy, you can go and do a little bit more deeper um, analysis and think about things a little more deeply. But in the initial process, um, which is kind of what I'm going through here. That's how I like to do it. So we have an earnings yield, which is the inverse of the PE ratio. So earnings over price, um, which is 5.88% adjusted for the debt and whatever other obligations are there. So that gives us, if we bought that business for $100, it would earn $5.88 um, the first year. And I'm using, I should say, I'm using forward earnings on this one too. So I'm using this $9.87. Again, I'm being more generous. Um, we'll see. I'm, I don't know if they reported yet. This has an E next to it, so it's not officially in the fast graph yet. But I'm assuming they're going to hit this. You know, if they miss this, then this will probably come down. And, and so we'll see what happens there. But I'm looking at $9.87. So I'm pulling a whole year forward too um, in order to get this number. And then if this grows, if this five dollars and eighty-eight cents grows at six percent um, on that one hundred dollars for ten years, so it's like one hundred dollars growing to one eighty-two seventy-nine over ten years. So if you put that in a Kager calculator, you should get something close to six point two two percent. So using these kind of what I think are pretty generous assumptions, this is about fair value here. Now that the price has come down a little bit. Um, but I would say if I wasn't quite as generous, this would probably be a little bit lower and you'd probably be closer to where the market's at, just the wider market. So it's decent. It's in the range. I mean, these are all estimates. So I would say it's kind of neutral to a hold unless earnings start coming up short here. Um, so where would that put a buy at? So for me, the recession they didn't really experience too much of a extraordinary decline during the, the Great Recession, which is 2008 is what I used here for it, um, compared to what we're seeing now. So really the recession buy price 
and just the standard one are both looking at like a hundred bucks a share. So about 28% lower than where the price is right now would give you a margin of safety. Now this does assume that they get this year's earnings in at 927. Um, that's the assumption for the recession buy price. And then next year, 987 is the assumption for just the normal non-recessionary um, valuation. So they would need to hit both of those numbers for these to work. If they miss, these numbers would go, both go lower, especially this year. Um, if they, whatever fourth quarter comes in, if it comes in short, that would lower the recession by price. And um, next year's expectations would lower this one. So hopefully that helps everybody. Um, I don't know how much the stock has come down. I thought I noticed it was overvalued when it was up here, but I don't think I made a video on it. So yeah, it's down like 25% off its high, which is, I would say, justified. <laughs> so, um, and I think there is still some risk that this boom here could come down. So there really is some downside risk here for earnings, but until they are proven, and as long as they can keep hitting what they're what they sh and not falling, you know, I'm not gonna mark them off too much for that. They didn't have crazy up years. I mean, for them, they were solid, but um, if you consider there's 20% extra inflation in the economy, that's gonna be, you know, an extra dollar to a share, right? So, you know, it, it could come down to like seven bucks a share and it wouldn't surprise me on one of these next couple of years, but it's just not, the evidence isn't there yet. Um, now, if I saw the stock price really take a dive and the market look like they saw something coming, um, I would be a little cautious before like jumping right in because that potential for earnings decline, I think is definitely here, but it's just not showing it yet in the numbers. So um, it all looks pretty, I don't see anything too out of the ordinary. It all looks pretty rational to me. Um, and we'll just have to see where earnings take the stock over time. Okay, if you found this useful, uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, I make videos nearly every day. Um, and we think I've made over 100 videos in the past few months, so um, between here and Patreon. So I try to do one here and one on Patreon at least five times a week. So usually I'm making like 10 videos a week. Um, I, w I am making a few videos on broader topics about learning to invest um, as an individual investor. So those those come out occasionally too whenever I have a good idea for one. And um, so if that's something you're interested in and not just individual analysis, um, I have a playlist of those on the channel as well. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. I'll see everybody later. Bye.